Hi guys, Lisa here. Um, if you know me a little bit better, then you probably know that I like to have some oat milk in my cappuccinos. Um, this is gonna look horribly sponsored, but uh, it's not. I just love oat milk. So over time, I've accumulated quite some of these cardboard milk cartons, um, mainly because I've been saving them for a specific reason. I have been getting a lot of questions about things being able to be turned into paper. One of the questions always is, can I turn milk cartons into paper? And I really don't know. I think so. Theoretically, you probably. Will it be the best paper? Most likely not. Will it be a super fun experiment in craft? Probably. So um, that's why I've been saving up my cartons. Again, not sponsored. This is just the best cappuccino milk. So we're gonna take my collection of milk cartons and we're gonna try to turn it into paper so that you know whether you can turn your milk cartons into some kind of paper, whether it's usable or not. I will try my hardest. That's all I can promise. All right, let's just, let's just do it. <laughs> I'm starting out with five clean milk cartons and I am gonna cut them into small pieces. The first thing is trying to cut up this little opening thingamajiggy. Um, it actually seems like this could be a really fun craft on its own. Maybe it could be a fidget toy. I don't know, if you have ideas, let me know. This seems fun. I then continue just cutting it up into strips and then into tiny pieces. But here is where I started to get worried because I realized that the inside wasn't just paper. It was this weird aluminum type of thing. It really didn't look like it would be able to become a pulp, but I was determined. So I just kept going and kept cutting all the boxes into small pieces. Then when I finished, I had this nice bucket filled with tiny pieces of milk cartons and a little bit of leftover spoiled oat milk. It does not smell nice, but that's okay. I was worried because the tiny pieces did not look like this would actually break down in the blender at all. Because I needed this to be as soft as possible, I added some boiling water as well as some hot water to it instead of my usual just cold water. I filled it up until everything was covered and then I set it aside to have a nice soak for a little while. Alrighty, the paper is soaked and it is ready for their next step. The first thing I instantly noticed is that there were a bunch of these plastic pieces floating around in the water. This actually gave me hope because plastic is the one thing you really, really do not want to have in your paper. I also noticed that there were visible layers in the cardboard that were coming apart. You could actually super easily pull off the aluminum inside and with a little bit more effort get the outside layer off as well. So then you were left with just the inside cardboard, which was so exciting because I knew that was gonna work. That is just paper, plain paper that we can break down and turn into new paper basically again. Um, so this was very, very hopeful. So you can see that there were three layers. You had the aluminum foil layer, you had the outside paper layer and the cardboard layer that was inside. I was really excited to see you could properly separate the cardboard inside of all the other parts because that meant that this could actually work. However, this also meant that I was gonna have to painstakingly peel each of these pieces apart. And I was not excited about that. There were many pieces, there were five boxes in very tiny pieces, but I was determined to make it work. So I spent the next hour or so, way too long, uh, peeling off every single layer and every single tiny piece and separating them and sorting them into four different piles. This took a long time. I want you to appreciate how long this took. When I was finally done, I was left with these four piles. You had pile number one, the most likely pile. This was the middle part of the cartons. It was just cardboard. I am pretty convinced that this will turn into a nice pulp because like you can see, it breaks down super easily and I'm confident we'll make something nice out of this. Then you have pile two, the maybe pile. This is the outside of the carton. It looks like it could be some type of paper, but it also seems to have some sort of coating that could ruin it completely as it probably won't break down in a blender properly. Next is pile three, the probably not pile. This is the inside of the carton. It really just looks like aluminum foil with some leftover inside cardboard. I have very little hope this will break down at all. Lastly, we have pile four, the no-no pile. This is the very inside. This is just straight up plastic garbage get it as far away from your paper as possible you do not want this in your paper we are not even touching this anymore goodbye bye to the no-no pile now it's time to find out the answer to the very important question will it pulp 
Let's start with the most likely pile. I am convinced it's going to be fine. Let's get my trusty blender and plop it in there together with some water and blend that ish up. went super smoothly hardly any backlash from my blender like i expected it does feel a little bit sticky it's hard to describe but compared to normal paper pulp it feels a lot more sticky i have no better way to describe that it's sticky but it looks good smooth nice definitely usable let's go on to number two the maybe pile I am a little worried, but also hopeful. So let's give it a shot. Uh, we have water in the blender, so let's blend it up. It does not sound great. My blender does not seem to be having fun. And I kind of feel bad for him. I keep going until I think I got it as blended as it could be. It took a while. And straight up, when I open up the blender, I see that there's a problem because it wasn't just paper. There was definitely a coating because there's tiny pieces of plastic throughout the entire bulb. Um, you can see the outside, the barcodes, the lettering, it's all really right there. So there was a coating. You can very clearly see that there's all these types of tiny bits of plastic. These are from the outside. It has lettering on it. It has like parts of a barcode on it. And when I'm starting it here, you can even more clearly see how much of the bulb is riddled with plastic. However, there's still pulp, so it might still work but there's plastic, sad. It's also way too much to actually filter out or pick out by yourself. There will always be plastic, it's too much. We will just have to embrace it. Lastly, we have the probably not pile and I am worried. I am pretty sure you should not put aluminum in a blender. So if I'm doing this, I'm doing this so you don't have to. I'm so sorry, Blender. That does not sound good at all. I'm trying to pulse it. I am pushing through. You can see that all the pieces of the aluminum are just staying intact. I am trying so hard to get it blended, but my Blender is making so many, many worrisome noises. And I still keep going. I don't know why I keep going, but I keep going. I'm so determined to give this a fair shot. I should have stopped there, but somehow, for some reason, I still keep going until I hear it again. And then I actually realized maybe maybe this is my sign to stop um and as soon as i open the lid it's quite clear this is never going to work the aluminum pieces are just straight up aluminum it is there's nothing that broke it down it's right there no we're not we're not going to use this this is this is absolute garbage and when i strain it you can even more clearly see that it's just straight up aluminum that's never going to be turned into paper um yeah it's, that's a no now it's time to see if we can actually turn it into paper. So we have two usable pulps. We have the pulp one that was from the cardboard that is nice and soft and just a little bit sticky, but it seems like it would work properly. It seems like I'm doing a slime video the way I'm touching the pulp, but uh, yeah, it feels nice. I like touching it. And then you also have the very pokey pulp, the pulp with all the pieces of plastic that is a lot grayer. And um, I am not very hopeful for, but I'm gonna give it a fair shot. It uh, is very pokey. That's the way I'm gonna describe it. It's just like there's pieces of plastic poking at you when you touch it. So let's start off with the nice brown pulp. I, I keep saying it felt sticky because it, it felt extremely sticky. It's sticky. And when I was stirring it around, I also noticed that when you lift up your hand, hardly any pulp would actually stay on your hand. However, there was plenty in the bucket. It's just they stuck together so much instead of floating separately inside the bucket, if that makes any sense. We're going to give it a shot. So I lift up my mold and deco and it actually seems to look pretty decent. It didn't look too lumpy at all. So I'm transferring it to a cotton bed sheet, pressing it in properly, um, making sure I'm really pressing it in because I have no idea how this paper will behave using my really old sponge. I have been using this for half a year, the same sponge. I really need to replace it, but please forgive how ugly the sponge looks. I'm making sure to dry the edges extra so it won't stay on the mold and then we press it in one more time and slowly lift off to reveal an actual sheet of paper. It does not look bad at all. I am 
pretty impressed. So let's set this one aside and let's make another one. I do this a few times like I always make my paper I didn't really come across any issues I end up making 10 pieces from the pulp Then, of course, it's time to try the pokey plastic pulp. I called the previous pulp sticky. However, this is sticky in a different uh, scenario because all the plastic just stuck to your hands, to the mold and deco. It just stuck on everything. The pulp itself was fine. It was just the plastic inside of it. This is not what your bucket with pulp is supposed to look like. It should not have pieces of plastic floating around. Is this what the ocean feels like? Because it kind of seems like it is. Um, yeah, there's plastic. It's just, I don't know how to put this. There's just straight of plastic in the pulp. There will be straight of plastic in the paper. But I lift up my mold and deco. I put it in there and I lift it up. And, um, yeah, that it's, it's, it's paper and plastic. It looks really bad. Um, yeah, th th there's definitely some pulp that's usable. You can see that. But at the pieces where there's plastic, there's also no pulp. But I am not giving up. You never know. So I am just transferring it to my bed sheet like I did with the other pulp. Pressing it in with my sponge very firmly. I am hoping that the plastic will stay on the sheet. I have no idea. But once I lift it up, it actually seems like it did. Uh, it looks like a sheet of paper, surprisingly. It looks ugly, but also kind of artsy. So I'm not mad. I don't think it's going to be very usable paper, but we'll see. So I just put that aside as well and start making a few more. Not too many. So once I finish making the sheets, I bring them over to my drying area and hang them up on this drying rack. I ended up making five of the plastic paper and ten of the brown paper. I hang them up to dry so it speeds up the drying process, but you can also let them lay down to dry. You just have to be careful when you move them. Any kind of disruption in the paper when it's still wet will result into some kind of relief or damage when the paper is dry so be aware of this and definitely um be careful when you're hanging it up and don't do stuff like this just pretend that didn't happen please <laughs> it happens way more often than i would like to admit so I let the papers dry overnight and then the next day I collect them together and they're all dry and ready to be peeled. 
but before we peel them I'm gonna flatten them with an iron a little bit so I take a sheet and I place a bed sheet on top and then just put some pressure with a hot iron and it will flatten them out really quickly. This is a nice way to speed up the, the pressing time if you don't have a book press or if you don't want to put it entirely in a book press. I also of course have to make sure that I'm ironing the plastic paper and I was kind of worried that I would melt the paper. It really didn't so I don't know why I was worried but you know that like little voice in the back of your head saying oh but what if nothing happened it was fine nothing melted. Now they're dry and we can actually peel them off. This is my favorite part. It is so satisfying to just peel off your paper and to really see how it turned out. And we also, of course, got to peel the plastic. I was a lot more careful with this because I was afraid that the plastic would not come off in one part, but it actually all stuck together. It really surprised me that there was enough palpable material to actually make this uniform sheet of paper. I was so surprised by how well the paper actually turned out. The, the brown paper looks really nice, very, very smooth, way smoother than I actually expected it to be. It looks nice, sturdy, doesn't feel bad. It's very soft, but most recycled paper is. For me, this means that it was already a success. It seems like there was a nice piece of paper that we've made, whether or not we can write on it. This for me already felt like a success. The plastic paper is exactly what I'm calling it. It just is plastic. It's plastic paper, but it really looks like an artistic piece of paper it's it's clear plastic but i like seeing the barcodes i like seeing the, the labels of the the carton i like seeing whatever it came from and it kind of you know i think you could definitely make a statement about the ocean with this if you wanted to i don't know i see options but before we can really really draw a conclusion whether or not you can make paper from milk cartons is uh we have to test it we have to test the paper so let's start off with the brown paper the one that i have most trust in we're starting off with just a ballpoint pen i am writing my own name because i have no other inspiration of what to write and this went down actually extremely smoothly way more smoothly than i expected it wasn't dipping in it was actually going down really smoothly and i would enjoy writing on this paper i then used a brush pen these are actually meant for calligraphy i just wasn't feeling like doing calligraphy so please excuse my handwriting don't roast me please And then I tried to just do a regular pencil. This isn't going too well, to be honest, surprisingly. It just wasn't going down nice. It didn't seem to really be picking it up. I don't know about my pencil or just the paper or combination. It just wasn't working nicely. I tried to draw a vlog here. I could not get anything on there. It was not working. So I tried to use the eraser and what happened was the thing that I expected to happen, it happens with most recycled paper, is that basically that just the fibers started coming off of the paper uh, because you're rubbing it off. So lastly, the ultimate question is will it hold direct ink? So I'm using this glass pen with some ink and I, w I am so surprised by this. It is not bleeding or barely bleeding. This is not what I expected it to behave at all. I was expecting it to bleed completely the moment I touched it with any kind of ink. I, I couldn't really believe it. Uh, this is insane. Even a fully drawn heart hardly bled through. The back is not that bad at all. I am very, very impressed by this. I did not expect it to work this well. And then lastly, we have the last test. Will it fold without breaking? And yes, it folds no problem. Very nice, very clean doesn't look like it's gonna break anytime soon so that is a plus that also means that probably i could actually turn this into a journal would you like to see a milk carton journal like i see possibilities there so now we have to try the plastic paper my hopes were very low for this so i started off with just the regular ballpoint 
pen and I was blown away. What is this? Why is this going down so smoothly? I expected none of the pen to go over the plastic, but it didn't feel like there was plastic. Apparently there's enough pulp over it or I don't really know if it's plastic or it's weird other thing, but I could write over it. No problem. Brush pen also went pretty nicely. The pencil, it was kind of a similar experience as to the previous one. Didn't go down very nicely. But when I then used the eraser, it actually seemed to hold that very well. Like it didn't seem to break down the way the other one did. I don't know what's happening. Why is this paper so much better than I expected? Lastly, the test with the ink. That one didn't respond well at all. It bled weirdly. The plastic didn't hold it. I mean, that was to be expected. And I completely forget this paper for it because it actually works as paper. I could write on this. This is insane. Let's test if it actually also folds. Yes, it folds very nicely, very cleanly. What is this? Why does this turn out so well? I am not sure how this turned out so well, but it did and I am low-key blown away. So in conclusion, can you make paper out of milk cartons? Yes, you can make paper. At least with this specific type of milk carton from Oatly, Barista Edition, you can. Subscribe if you wanna see more of these kind of things and leave a comment down below to let me know what you want to see me do. I'm open to so many things. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next week. It's too, I, I, made, it, it. I made it indestructibly. It's not gonna fall over. Did it. <laughs>